Serena Grande is an interesting name, and I can think of two reasons why it totally suits her. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Lamberto Bava's Argento-esque giallo, Delirium. Released in 1987, Delirium was almost an Argento film. The director was attached to the project at one point, but bailed when he didn't like the direction the script was headed in. So, the project fell to Lamberto Bava, son of famed Italian genre director Mario Bava, and a regular assistant director on Argento Productions. The Argento connection doesn't stop there, though. Argento's longtime collaborator and girlfriend, Daria Nicolotti, turns up in a supporting role. It's also got performances from Sick Flicks veterans Luigi Montefiore and David Brandon. What's not to love? But enough about that. Can all these Argento connections earn Delirium a five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by Hunt a Killer. Have you ever fancied yourself smarter than the cops and detectives in your favorite movies and TV shows? Well, Hunt a Killer will let you put your money where your mouth is by presenting you with a wide variety of deviously delightful crimes to solve. Think you're up to the task? The best way to describe the Hunt a Killer experience is basically as an episode of CSI merged with your favorite escape room. Each Hunt a Killer title puts you in the shoes of a detective working to solve a crime and track down a murderer. Pick from standalone single part crime cases, multi-chapter mystery boxes, jigsaw puzzles, books, or choose from subscription options with six months prepay, yearly prepay, or month to month plans. I've been playing Dead Below Deck. It's an all-in-one experience that you can play solo or with up to four friends. The game has really blown me away with its quality construction and great writing. Just look at all the stuff that comes in the box. We've got maps, brochures, notes, and even a locked box. The game materials are really well made. Nothing feels cheap or mass produced. Everything just feels real, which adds to the sense of immersion created by the story. It's like someone handed you a real box of evidence. Each Hunt a Killer game comes with physical components like this and also makes use of an app to take your immersion to the next level. You'll get voicemail leads, AI contacts, and other digital interactions that give the already impressive experience an extra wow factor. I love this stuff. And since nothing says spooky season like some creepy mysteries, Hunt a Killer is celebrating by offering up to 50% off horror and supernatural themed cases. Here's what you can save on by partaking in the October promotion. I definitely want to pick up those Blair Witch box sets. Yeah, those are some scary good deals. So, are you ready to put on your detective cap and start solving some cases? Head on over to the Hunt a Killer website and use my code HORRORGEEK for $10 off your purchase. Your game nights are about to get way more interesting. Thanks again to Hunt a Killer for sponsoring today's video. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on this bust of Caligula? I thought this was an Italian slasher, not another Italian Caligula ripoff. Oh, it's Medusa. This is good to know since this is probably who's gonna claim this video. And we open with Serena Grande showing us why they call her Serena Grande. Hell yeah. Yeah, exactly like that, Danny. And unless Jay blurs out all the boobs, you're gonna have to take my word for it. I think we can probably show this one. I was gonna do a five reasons you need to watch Delirium video, but I think we can just stop at two reasons and call it good. Anyway, we last saw Serena Grande back in Anthropophagus. She wore a lot more clothes in that one. And here's the late Daria Nicolodi. We haven't seen her since Paganini Horror. What? And David Brandon? You may remember him from Stage Fright and as the drunken priest in Beyond Darkness. Holy shit, look out. We've got a George Eastman, aka Luigi Montefiore, sighting too. Fun fact, Eastman didn't like Lamberto Bava and he says Serena Grande is a horrible actress. At any rate, this is like a who's who of Italian horror so far. If we get Michele Suave or Giovanni Lombardo Radice, I might die from joy. No Suave, but here's Carl Zinni, he was in Demons. And Italian pop star Sabrina Salerno as herself, basically. Hmm, Miss Grandy's wardrobe? You mean she wears clothes at some point in this movie? And if you like this rock and score, thanks Simon Boswell. Directed by Lamberto Bava. We haven't seen Lamberto in a while. Last time was in Blade in the Dark. As I mentioned earlier, this was originally slated to be a Dario Argento project, but according to stories, he dropped out after script changes. Bava then stepped in and took over, although he has expressed regrets about it. With the credits over, we get to the movie proper. This chick is getting blasted in the face. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. I mean with this water. David Brandon's like, I knew this telling hot chicks I was a photographer thing was gonna pay off. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. And here's Serena Grande as you've never seen her before. With clothes on. 
I gotta say, this Italian version of Dynasty, where Serena's Alexis and Daria Nicolodia's Crystal is way more interesting than the American version. Over in another movie, we're getting this Italian ripoff of Rear Window. Meanwhile, Serena's got a call. It's Lamberta Bava asking her if she'd consider doing this scene topless. I will say, it's sort of amazing it took two writers to create dialogue like this. You're not like those others, Gloria. You could put out my fire, all right. <laughs> Daniele Stropa strikes again. And with that, Italian Alexis is off to work on her plot to steal Blake Carrington's fortune. Again. That night, David Brandon has a gift for Serena. I think it's too small to be Gwyneth Paltrow's head, but it's just the right size to be a dick in a box. We then stop for some exposition, which is apparently somewhere in Suspiria, judging by this lighting. Anyway, the gist of all this jibber-jabber is Selena married a rich guy, what a shocker, started a smutty magazine, and then he died. It's like the timeless tale of the stripper dancing her way through college who marries a rich customer and then buys the strip club. Story time ends, and man, they should have probably invited the crew into the house to shoot the movie instead of making them film from outside. I do think it's pretty sweet they got an entire RGB lighting set up for the house, though. They were like 30 years ahead of the curve on that one. Um, and what the fuck is this? I feel like she's really got her eye on me. I was gonna fire off some Cyclops puns here, but I only know one, and you know what they say about eye puns. They're not puns, they're optical illusions. At any rate, she's not alone, and she doesn't look very excited to see whoever this is. Yeah, just stick a fork in her, literally. Hope you had a good time. Serena, meanwhile, has another call from Lamberto Bava. Can you let us in the house, please? It's hard to shoot through all these windows. Also, why are you still wearing clothes? She heads off to see what the commotion is, but all she finds is this jump scare. <gasps> and here's some of Boswell's music from Stage Fright. Of course, she heads out to investigate in the rain in her sheer nightgown, too. Lamberta Bava knows what you want. The next day, Serena heads into work, and naturally, her magazine is called Pussycat. I'm guessing it was to avoid a trademark lawsuit from the Cat Fancy people. And she's having a heated exchange with this lady who wants to buy her magazine. Look at this dramatic turn. Action pose. Then we jump over here. Say what you will, but body removal is a real drag. That night, Serena gets a surprise. It's a sweet photo of her dead friend. I don't think this is the kind of thing they want to run in Pussycat. Don't worry, though. The cops are on the case. I think our killer might be a giant, judging by the size of this fork, Inspector. Inside, Serena Grande is smoking. No, seriously, she's smoking a cigarette. Gross. The cop shows up to ask a few questions, and is it just me, or does he look like a Dollar General version of Detective Mike Logan from Law & Order? <laughs> Anyway, I just really want to know why Serena's wearing a gold-plated bicycle lock around her neck. And that's not the only thing that's baffling. In our other movie, this dude's getting some pump action. Hell yeah. No, <laughs> not like that, you pervs. I mean with this shotgun. And over in yet another movie, the new issue of Pussycat is finally out. I'm snagging this one for the Gore Vidal interview. Dude's gonna take out the trash, but all he finds is this dead body. Sharon Stone is looking rough. And now Daria Nicolodi's on the phone. Probably ask him why Dario didn't get her out of this movie when he bailed. That out of the way, let's check back in on Serena's frenemy. Looks like she's hard at work with Discount Madonna on her new album. Like a virgin? That's a terrible title. Isn't it a little early to be drinking? Said no one in a horror movie from Italy ever. And we might as well stop for another great moment in horror film acting here. That bitch is getting the best we have. Damn you, Alexis Colby! And damn, I guess we just jumped to the Big Apple. Please, I know that was an unbelieve apple good pun. There's no need for apple applause. Also, I will not apple apologize for these jokes. I find them appealing. Hold on, did this just turn into Luigi Cosi's Contamination? I already covered that one. Serena Grande and Budget Ram Paul star in 2001, A Sex Odyssey. Coming soon to a theater near you. Hell yeah. No, not like that. Well, maybe like that, I guess. Then she bumps into three extras from a Fulci zombie movie. They shot a lot of stuff here at Cinecita. See, they even got Luigi Montefiore here shooting some Joe D'Amato Ator movie. Luigi's trying to run some game on her, but Serena knows what's up. Ah, uh, you'll never change. You'll be a villain till the day you die. <laughs> but no woman can resist the animal magnetism of Luigi Montefiore for long. Rawr. He likes his women grande. Like Serena Grande, apparently. Then they get down to business. I think he's just trying to keep her abreast of the situation. Then I can't believe it's not Rand Paul busts in with the C block. Awkward. We then jump over here, where the girl group from Paganini Horror is hard at work on their new music video. Let's ask Ian Sarah what he thinks of this. 
It stinks. <laughs> we even got Family Dollar Eddie from Iron Maiden in it. Later that night, Serena finds out that Luigi Montefiore is a love him and leave him, or maybe hump him and dump him kind of guy. He's an actor. He's shooting a motion picture there. Oh, there's no one shooting a film there now. Over at Sabrina's place, our killer arrives. He's cosplaying a beekeeper. And look, Sabrina's basically morphed into pop music sensation Justine Bieber. Unlike little Kim, she's no queen bee apparently, because they swarm like Wu-Tang killer bees. And she's topless, so they probably stung her in the boobies. Jesus, there's so many bees in here, it's like a house swarming party. To be seen over, we buzz off to the pussycat offices where Serena has more mail. And it's over to the morgue. I hope she doesn't come back from the dead. The last thing this movie needs is a zombie. I can't believe how many bee puns I crammed in here. Back at Serena's place, we get some more jibber-jabber. Could Daria Nicolodi be our killer? And only one person could have the negative. Roberto. He probably doesn't have any alibis for either of those murders. At night, Serena's getting accosted by the wheelchair guy. But it's all just really football practice. I feel like this movie is just going in circles at this point. Not <laughs> sure why. Anyway, after rolling around like he's in a Limp Biscuit video, he stops long enough to play with his balls. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, I mean these billiard balls. Hey, remember Luigi Montefiore? Yeah, he's still in this movie. This scene is pretty steamy. And sure, I guess we can just take a break from the movie to watch TV. I mean, why not? Back at Pussycat HQ, Serena sees the writing on the wall and is leaving the skin mag business behind. You want to sell the magazine? The future of adult entertainment is a thing called the internet. No one will buy smutty magazines anymore. Then she drives home. I listen to the soundtrack from Stage Fright while I drive around too. I don't want to alarm her, but I think someone is filming her from the back seat. Eventually, she stops by the cemetery, completely unaware she's in some grave danger. I'm sure this is nothing new for Serena. She's been around plenty of stiff men in her day. Apparently, she's here to make a confession. I'm sorry you're dead, honey, but I wanted you to hear this from me first. I've been banging Luigi Montefiore again. Then things get really weird. Well, since I haven't sold the magazine yet, I thought I'd model again. I haven't got anything against the idea. I think it's great. Um, that's your sister, who poses nude. I mean, what the hell, Five Below Rampal? Man, why do I feel like we've wandered into another Dawn of the Dead ripoff? And now you can say Serena's really moving up in the world. Oh yeah, things seem to be escalating quickly. Judging from this shot, it looks like she's being stalked by a munchkin. Then she gets into this lift. I don't think this is what they meant by elevated horror. She finally arrives at her floor and finds this jump scare. Back at Pussycat HQ, Serena's getting a good poking. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, I mean she's getting a sedative injection. Get your mind out of the gutter. Then this movie does its best Fonzie impression. Hey. You kids even remember Arthur Fonzarelli? Christ, I'm old. Anyway, the good news is the mail's here. The bad news is it's just bills, credit card offers, and more murder photos. Daria's gonna drive to the cops, but someone wants to lend her a hand working the stick shift. I can see why Law & Order Rome never took off. These guys never solve a case. Meanwhile, Serena's nap is interrupted when she realizes she's late for football practice. Next, we check in with David Brandon. Let's see what develops. And since we've got some time to kill, he's gonna show us his vacation slides. This is me working on Beyond Darkness with Claudio Fragasso. Meanwhile, Italian Mike Logan and Lenny Briscoe are pulling a little B&E. Just tell Jack McCoy we have probable cause. They're convinced David Brandon is the killer, so there's no way David Brandon is the killer. And to prove my point, he's now the new hood ornament on this car. But since everyone's basically convinced he's the killer, we might as well wrap up the sale of Pussycat. <laughs> Why would she still sell? They really thought David Brandon was the killer. He's now dead and she's safe to peddle soft focus smut to the masses. At any rate, since we still have 15 minutes left in this movie, let's pad the runtime by watching Serena walk into her house in real time. Thrill as she walks past the swimming pool. Feel dread as you wonder if she remembered her keys. Inside, Daria Nicolodi's had enough of being in this movie and split. Later on, Liberto Bava calls. Hey, we got 14 minutes to go. Could you maybe get naked and take a long bath or something? I love that the thrilling climax of Delirium is basically just Serena Grande walking around her house like she's lost. Then her dead brother shows up. This Italian version of Weekend at Bernie's is weird. She flees inside, stalked by the killer. And if you guessed it was her brother in a terrible wig, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. I mean, it seemed obvious after his creepy line about being cool with his sis doing nude photos again. Turns out he's got some self-esteem issues. Don't you like me? Then things get creepy. I want to see you naked one more time. Told ya. But hey, gives Bob an excuse to get Serena Grande naked one more time. 
I guess that counts for something. I don't know, this feels more like a blade in the dark than a blade in the dark did. And just before he makes her strip nude for a killer like this is an Andrea Bianchi film, he gets shot by the wheelchair kid. <laughs> yeah, he's still in this movie too. And in a poetic twist, we learn this. Is my brother alive? Yes, he'll make it. <laughs> I gotta say, I feel a swerve coming. I mean, they basically took her to Haddonfield Memorial Hospital. Oh yeah, here it comes. Except it's just football practice. And it's just the wheelchair kid. But we do get a freeze frame ending. Hey, what the hell happened to Luigi Montefiore? Oh yeah, and we not only get a freeze frame, we get this sweet soft jazz sax on the credits. Maybe the most 80s ending credit sequence ever. So, what have we learned from Delirium? Well, for starters, Serena Grandi's name is surprisingly accurate. I'm sure Bava thought she was the breast actress for this role. It's also easy to look at this film and envision it as an Argento project. But at the same time, you can sort of see why he wasn't interested in making it. For starters, it feels fairly similar to opera in a lot of ways, and opera is a far better film. This one feels like a Lamberto Bava movie through and through. Sort of lesser Argento without all the style. Considering Bava was Argento's second unit director for years, that's not all that shocking. What is shocking is how little splatter there is in this one. How many barf bags can Delirium earn? Definitely not five, but let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Delirium is pretty underwhelming. We've got a pitchfork stabbing, the bee death, one off-screen kill, and some corpses. That's about it. As such, I can't give Delirium anything higher than a one barf bag rating. This is definitely not a sick flick, but it's got a good cast and is pretty entertaining anyway. Looking for a better Bava film? Then be sure to check out my review of Demons. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.